Hello, hello. I'm Brutton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we are going to talk about an important concept on the MCAT, isoelectric point. This is a topic that many students struggle with. In fact, this is something that took me quite some time to wrap my head around when I was in your shoes. The isoelectric point, or PI as it's commonly written, is the pH at which a molecule has a net charge of zero. This is important in biochemistry because the charge of a molecule can affect how it interacts with other molecules. Let's take an amino acid glycine, for example. Amino acids have both an amino group and a carboxy terminus, which can act as either an acid or a base at different pH values. The, it's also important to note that at different pH values, the amino acid can have a different charge. But at the isoelectric point, we said that the amino acid has a net charge of zero. And as you can see, the positively charged amino group is balancing with the negatively charged carboxyl group. So while there is charge within the molecule, the net charge evens out to be zero. Plus one minus one equals zero. To determine the isoelectric point of an amino acid, we can use the pKa values of its ionizable groups. The pKa is the pH at which half the ionizable groups are protonated and half are deprotonated. For example, there are two ionizable groups in glycine, the amino group and the carboxyl group. The pKa of the amino group is around 10, while the pKa of the carboxyl group is around 2, and these are numbers you will want to have memorized for the test. At a pH below the pKa of an amino group, the amino group will be protonated. You can see here. So if we were to add pH to this, we see that the pH is going to be less than 2 over here. It's going to be greater than 10 over here. And we still have to figure out what the pH is here at our pI. Well, we can do this by just taking the average of our pKa's. Because we know that at the isoelectric point, the net charge of the amino acid is 0. This occurs when the pH is equal to the average of the pKa value of the ionizable groups. If we do the math here, we say, OK, our pI, our isoelectric point, is equal to the pKa1, the base, and the pKa2, our acid, divided by 2. So if we do this math, we'll see that, OK, 2 plus 10 over 2, so 12 over 2, equals 6. So the pI is 6. This is the amino, this is the pH at which we will have majority net charge of 0 of glycine. This is also known as its Zwitter ionic form. A Zwitter ion means it has two different charges. We have a negative charge and a positive charge. So great, we've mastered glycine. But unfortunately, not all amino acids are as easy as glycine. We've got some tricky ones out there that have negative charges, three pKa groups. Ooh, let's take a look at a more complicated one like that. Take a moment to pause the video to see if you can solve what the pI will be of this amino acid. The first thing you want to do is draw out all the protonated forms like I did here. Then we will want to find one with a net charge of being zero. I've highlighted this one in orange. Next, all we need to do is average the two pKa's on either side of it. In this case, that's 1.88 and 3.65. Try this math on your own before I show you. Remember, you'll want to round. We're pretending like this is the MCAT, so no calculators. So we'll set up our equation. We say pKa1 plus pKa3 divided by 2. We plug in these numbers. It's 1.88 plus 3.865 divided by 2. Now, let's do some rounding. I'll say that's a you know 1.88 plus 3.65. That's probably around 5. Divide that by 2. So this is just 2.5 as our PI for this acidic amino acid. Understanding the isoelectric point is really important for the MCAT, especially for the biochemistry section. Make sure you practice these concepts and understand how to apply them to different problems. Thank you so much for watching our video on the isoelectric point, and I will see you next time.